yo, check out this video. Very interesting. Talking about Viminas, these flying saucers that were created in ancient Egypt over 3,500 years ago. Check it out. India, I meant. Over 3,500 years ago. Long ago, in ancient India, there were legendary flying machines known as Vimanas. These mystical aircraft were said to have been used by the gods and demigods, as well as by highly advanced human civilization. Ain't that talking about us? Listen, did you hear what he said? The, these, these, this craft, these flying saucers were used by gods and demigods, demigods, meaning advanced civilizations, and also used by humans. Right here, as it says, humans. And now, isn't that what's happening today? We have human-built UFOs, and we have advanced civilizations coming over here too. Same thing that happened back then is happening today, as we speak. According to Hindu tradition, the manas were powered by advanced technology and could travel through the air as well as through space and time. Some stories even describe them as being able. Now, see. A lot of these aliens are coming are, are coming through here through a portal. Or are coming through here through space and time. I mean getting over on space and time. Having a way to pass through space and time or to open a portal and arrive. And now I don't know if humans human beings have I don't think human I don't think we are able are capable of that technology yet but these advanced beings are as what they just described to change shape and size at will change shape shape change shape and size at will you are y'all probably saw on YouTube a lot of these UFOs can change can shape shift I know I've saw some on YouTube that that was able to shape shift that's what this thing saying it, they was doing it way back 3,500 years ago. Buddhist. Now, I don't know if we have the capability yet. Because how are we going to be in something that shape shifts? I don't know. Text also mentioned the manas. Although they are often referred to as palaces in the sky, these flying machines were said to be the personal vehicles of the gods and were used to transport them from one realm to another. Despite their incredible abilities, the manas were not always used for benevolent purposes. Some legends tell of great wars fought in the skies, with armies of the manas clashing in epic battles. There you go. And it looks like man is trying to repeat, repeat that today. Also, this is where Hitler used. Hitler got his technology on building USOs, on building UFOs, I'm sorry, from the Vedas. The Vedas is older than the Bible, y'all. And the the Vedas make it clear. You know, when I want answers, when I look for stuff of answers of, of God and answers on the world, I go to the Vedas. I don't go to the Bible. The Vedas is more knowledgeable. The Vedas talk about things the Vedas has complete knowledge. As I'm looking through Hindu, searching through Hindu and all and Buddhism, I, I've studied Buddhism, Hinduism, and uh, the Vedas is part of Hinduism. This is, and I've studied Christianity and all that. The Vedas seems to be the most complete, the most balanced. You know what I'm saying? And they do what no other religion do. They talk about flying saucers. Like Star Wars type stuff. The Bible don't talk about it. And they, and they, and they, describe, they describe it clearly. The Vedas to me is superior over the Bible. And this is where Hitler got his knowledge from. It says the Vedas comprise a vast corpus of Sanskrit poetry. This is where Hitler got his swastika from, too. He got his swastika from the Vedas. Aryans. If, if you study Hitler, you would know that he was, you know, obsessed with the Aryans. 
He was trying to copy the Aryan culture. The, Veda, the Vedas comprise a vast corpus of Sanskrit poetry, philosophical dialogue, myth, and ritual incantations developed and composed by Aryans over 3,500 years ago. If you know anything about Hitler, you know he was obsessed with Aryans. And this is where he got his knowledge from. The Vedas, man. And so it says right here, the most well-known documentation of the ancient Vimana of flying machines comes from the Via Manica Sastra, an earlier 20th century translation of many accounts of Vimana technology found in ancient Vedic strip scriptures. It details drawings of a range of crafts, including the sources of fuel used to power them. Although some can be confusing, the translations talk of certain elements and minerals we are familiar with like mica, quicksilver, and mercury, but also mention strange liquids referred to as honey, which may have been an unknown substance with a similar viscosity or appearance to a bee's nectar. That sounds like all to me. But uh, this is amazing, right? They draw this, y'all, like 3,500 years ago, showing y'all how to build these saucers. Amazing. The Bible don't teach y'all that. Muslims don't teach us this. The Vedas is the perfect knowledge to me. It seems to be the perfect knowledge. It answers everything. and It answers all my questions regarding everything from, you know, on top of every Hindu temple or pyramid, one can find a Vimana, and, oft, and often they are rounded saucer-like objects, which certain theorists believe were the vehicles of extraterrestrials. Eric von Danken points out the, mod the modern sightings that created our perception of UFOs look very similar to the Viminas of ancient India. Von Danken also points out that the depiction of Shiva flying on his bird, Gaudi, could easily have been a primitive description of an airplane or spacecraft. Gar Garda was known for dropping bombs. Look at that. Dropping bombs. Flying to the moon and bringing Shiva to different locations throughout the solar system. Shiva ain't nothing but a damn alien. A higher being. A E.T. And trying to explain this sight to future generations. The elders' story of a god flying around on a giant bird or bird-like craft might sound ridiculous and be considered merely mythological to those who may have never witnessed it. When we look closer at these Viminas, the descriptions of the sounds they made and the way they looked when they took off began to resemble jet propulsion more and more. One translation of a passage in the Vedic Mahabha describes a Vimana. The Vimana had all necessary equipment. It could not be conquered by the gods or demons, and it radiated light and reverberated with a deep rumbling sound. Its beauty captivated the minds of all who beheld it. Visk Vakarma, the lord of its design and construction, had created it by the power of his auxiliaries, probably means scientists, and its outline, like that of the sun, could not be easily delineated. The passages speak of Krishna's cohort, an epic hero of the Big Gita, or I can't say that shit, describing a trip he took in a Vimana into the heavens where he saw thousands of airborne chariots and another massive Vimana that was seven stories tall, much like Enoch's trip taken up in a wheel chariot. Von Dakin says he believes that this could have been a primitive interpretation of a trip to the mothership from which the many Vimana seen on earth could have originated. The Drona Park of his nuclear war. One of the strangest stories of the ancient Hindu Vedas comes from a translation of the Drona Parva. The Drona Parva. The seventh book in the Maha Bharata. The book describes Drona, a warrior appointed, appointed as leader of of an army in the Krakastra War and his ensuing death in that battle. The story fits in with themes seen elsewhere 
in the Mahabharata and other ancient texts that detail the difficulties of war. But this particular book provides some descriptions that sound eerily familiar, similar to the effects of a nuclear war. Explosions that level everything, animals screaming and engulfed in flames. This is how Mars was described, y'all. Pregnant women's babies dying and metal armor melting onto the skins of warriors who wear them all sound like the result of a nuclear blast. It mentions birds falling from the sky due to a single projectile charged with all the power of the universe as bright as a thousand suns. We beheld in the sky what appeared to us to be a mass of scarlet cloud resembling the fierce flames of a blazing fire. That's an atomic bomb, nuclear weapon. From the mass, many blazing missiles flashed and tremendous roars like the noise of a thousand drums beaten at once. And from it fell many weapons winged with gold and thousands of thunderbolts with loud explosions and many hundreds of fiery, fiery wheels. That's all it was, man. A nuclear got an uh, atomic bomb or uh, more powerful. Were these scarlet clouds resembling blazing fi fires and the subsequent death and destruction in the ancient scriptures describing the effects of a nuclear fallout? The primitive technology of the time couldn't have been exposed to radiation of any sort. I hate I hate the arrogance of today. They always talking about some something primitive, but yet they don't know how they built a lot of these ancient structures ancient structures they want to say aliens built them but they never give credit to the people in that time you know what i'm saying because they don't understand they don't know look they had technology back then y'all they had this technology way back then oh man they says okay the primitive technology of the time couldn't have been exposed to radiation of any sort. Though the descriptions of pregnant mothers' babies dying sounds very much like the effects of radiation exposure. After we developed the atomic bomb that was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Robert Oppenheimer even quoted that Bahi Gita saying, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Oddly enough, Opener, who developed the bomb, was also a scholar of Sanskrit. Wow. And some have compared his story to that of Arjuna in the Bhakti Gita. Arjuna must be convinced to fight in a battle he does not want to take part in due to a more moral dilemma, which some ha have compared to Oppenheimer's hesitance in developing the atomic bomb. Wow, man. What goes around comes around. Look, look, looks like life just repeats itself. And if life repeats itself, it's going to be a war between aliens and mankind soon. And that's going to be sad. That's crazy. If, if life repeats, if, if, if this if history repeats itself, yeah, it, we look like we're going to be in this again because mankind is faking the funk, pretending to be aliens, creating craft for 75 years. And y'all, you know, like I said, Hitler started this. Hitler was, Hitler searched the Aryans out searched the Sanskrit out was a was a, a student read the Vedas knew about the power of the Vimanas and wanted to create his own Vimana flying saucer but it was too late for him before he could really take off with his creation you know he was defeated you know because he was just getting started and the U.S. government had taken, has took, you know, the U.S. government took all of Germany's top scientists. And they started working for the U.S. government. They started building UFOs way back then in the 50s, 40s, and 50s. USA now. 
was building UFOs in the 40s and 50s. So you can imagine how far they have gotten since then. You know, we pretty much probably have mastered the technology. I mean, it's been like 75, 80 years that we've had to master creating a UFO. I don't know why we haven't used this technology yet. I don't know why we're hiding it. You know, maybe the maybe the aliens are shooting it down. You know, we always talking about the aliens are crashing. Well, maybe the aliens are shooting down man-made UFOs. That's why. That's why they're crashing. That's probably what's going on. The aliens are shooting down man-made UFOs. <laughs> That's why we so quick to find them. That's why we so quick the men in black or whatever. That's why they so quick to go find these crashed UFOs. Because man man has stuck his nose in business he don't belong. Flying these UFOs around, poking his nose in in in, in these alien business in business he don't need to be, and they shooting down his UFOs. You know what I'm saying? That's what's happening. Man-made UFOs are getting shot down. And, uh, you know, you can go on and can go on and on, man. That's it, though, for me, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, we came a long way from the Hitler days. And like I said, Hitler was building these things, and we pretty much an expert on building UFOs by now. And we probably got them, and we probably remote control them. You know, it's probably nobody even in the UFO. It's probably we probably have we probably controlling that thing from a uh, from inside a from inside a, a closed area somewhere, like inside a damn airport somewhere. We probably controlling that thing like a remote control airplane. You know what I'm saying? Got that thing flying fast as crap, scaring the pilots, and a, and a lot of the, the the military don't even know about it. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a closed kept secret, and I don't know what they what they keeping it a secret for. I don't know what they doing. I don't know why they haven't used this technology for their benefit. But like I said, they probably tried to use the technology. And the UFOs are shooting it down. The ETs are shooting it down. That could be it. That's it though. Peace.